हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज़ पूजा शर्मा एंड वेलकम बैक टू वाई शाई एस यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुडे वी विल बी रीडिंग द चैप्टर सिक्स ऑफ आर जोग्राफी क्लास एलेवेंथ इंसर्ट सीरीज एंड बिफोर वी बिगिन दीज आर द कॉन्टैक्ट डिटेल्स ऑफ वाई शाई एस इफ इन केस यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू एनरोल फॉर आर टेस्ट सीरीज दीज आर द कॉन्टैक्ट डिटेल्स यू कैन इवन ई मेल अस एंड विजिट आर यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर मोर सच डिटेल्ड एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव वीडियोज ऑफ वेरियस सब्जेक्ट्स so let's begin so as you can see on the screen these are the different types of soils which are found in our country we have black soil alluvial soil then red soil laterite soil desert soil forest and mountain soil then we have saline and alkaline so soil and then the peaty and the marshy soil so these are the regions where they are found so soil is a very important layer of the earth crust the topmost layer and it is a very valuable resource the bulk of our food and much of our clothing is derived from land based crops that grow in the soils so the crops that grow in the soil they provide us food also they provide us clothes also for example the cotton which grows in the black soil it is used for our cloth material we depend a lot on soil for our day to day needs and it has evolved over a thousands of years and the various agents of weathering and gradation they have acted upon the parent rock material to produce a thin layer of soil soil is a mixture of rock debris organic materials which develop on the earth surface so what happens is these agents of weathering like wind water what they do is there will be this parent rock which will be a large rock so these different types of phenomenon which occur in nature they will break down this parent rock material and it they'll break it down into small fine materials of sand or soil so that is how the soil is formed the major factors affecting the formation of soil is relief the parent material then vegetation climate and other life forms and also the time period also the human activities they have a great influence up to a large extent and the components of soils are mineral particles the humus water and air the actual amount of each of these it depends upon the type of soil and some soils they lack in one of these minerals or elements and other soils they may have a different combination of all of them so when we dig up a pit on land and look at the soil we can see that we'll find different colors in all the layers of the soil so uh, it consists of three main layers which is called the horizons so horizon a it is a topmost layer where all the organic materials they are found along with the mineral matter nutrients and water these all are very necessary for the growth of plants then we have horizon b so this is a transition zone between horizon a and horizon c this will be the middle portion and it contains matters which are derived from both below as well as from above so what this horizon b will do it will uh, take in all the matter from the top layer also and from the bottom layer also so it has some amount of organic content in it but the mineral matter sometimes it will get weathered weathered means uh, it will get displaced or it will get moved away because of the various weathering agents like wind water so horizon c it is composed of the loose parent material this layer will be the first stage in the soil formation process and it will eventually form above the two layers so it will be above horizon b and horizon a so this arrangement of layers is known as the soil profile and underneath these three horizons we find the bedrock or the parent rock which is uh, which will be this hard land below the soil so soil it is a very complex and varied entity and uh, many scientists have done a lot of research on it and in order to understand the importance of soil and its properties 
uh, it is very essential to attempt a scientific study of the soil. So, many scientists in our country, they have uh, done many surveys, research and studies on how soil is and what are the contents and the properties which are present in it. So, the classification of soil, it will help us achieve this objective of understanding why soil is important and what is present in soil and what is not present in certain types of soils. Then we have classification of soils. So, India, it has different types of relief features, landforms, climatic conditions and also vegetation types are also different in different regions. So, these have contributed in the development of uh, many types of different soils which we find in India and in ancient times salt was used, soil was used to classify into two major groups that is the Urvara and Usara. So, this, this was the fertile and the sterile soil. So, Urvara is the fertile soil and sterile soil is the Usara. So, in the 16th century AD, the soil was classified on the basis of their uh, characteristics and the external features such as texture, soil, texture, color, slope of land and moisture content which is present in the soil. And based on this texture, many types of uh, soil types were identified as sandy, clay, silty and loamy. Then on the basis of color, they were categorized into red soil, yellow soil, black soil. So, since independence, many scientific surveys of soils have been conducted by various agencies and the Soil Survey of India, it, which was established in 1956, it made comprehensive studies and research of soils in selected areas like in the Damodar Valley and the National Bureau of uh, Soil Survey and the Land Use Planning which is an institute under the control of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. It did a lot of studies on Indian soil and based on that, they classified soils into the following order which you can see on the table. So, in their effort to study soil and, soil and its matter uh, and to make it more comparable at the international level, the ICAR has classified the Indian soils on the basis of their nature, character and as per the United States Department of Agriculture, soil taxonomy. And then on the basis of their genesis, color, composition, location, the soils of India have been classified into these eight types which you can see on the screen which we read in the first slide which is the alluvial soil, black soil, red and yellow soil, laterite, arid, saline, PT and forest soils. So, this is the percentage value which they share. So, starting with alluvial soils. So, this is the most widespread soils which are found in the country, especially in the northern plains and the river valleys. These soils, they cover up to 40% of the total area of the country. So, mainly why they are found in these northern plains is the drainage system over there or the rivers and the tributaries which are found over there, it's, it's a lot many rivers flow from these plains. So, these rivers, they make those plains very fertile and uh, very useful for agriculture. That is the reason why we find alluvial soil mainly in these regions. So, they are depositional soils. They transport and deposit sediments and uh, these sediments, they are mainly transported and deposited by the rivers and streams which originate in Himalayas or the mountains. So, through a narrow corridor, which means this line, this narrow corridor in Rajasthan, they extend into the plains of Gujarat. And in the peninsula region, they are found in the deltas of the east coast. You can see over here, this is the east coast, the deltas of the east coast and in the river valleys. So, the alluvial soils, they vary in nature from sandy to clay. And they are generally rich in potash, but they are poor in phosphorus. Also in the upper Ganga plains, upper and middle Ganga plains, you will find two types of to uh, so soils, which is the Khadar and the Bhangar. So, Khadar is a new soil which is deposited by floods which occur annually. And this enriches the soil by depositing the fine silts. And Bhangar, it represents a system of the old alluvial soil which is deposited away from the flood plains. 
so this new soil or the khadar soil it will be near the river like uh, on the either sides of the river whereas this bhangar it will be little bit away from the river it will move away because uh, the new soil will replace the old soil and form a new top layer so both khadar and bhangar soils they contain this kankars or the calcareous concentrations concretions sorry these soils they are more loamy and clayey in the lower middle ganga plains and the brahmaputra va valley because of the moisture content and the sand content it will decrease from west to east the color of the alluvial soils it will be from light gray to ash gray and the shades of this colors it will mainly depend on the deposition the texture of the material and the time that it takes to attain its maturity stage also these alluvial soils they are intensely cultivated then we have a black soil which is also known as a rigur soil or the black cotton soil because cotton is grown in black soil so black soil it covers most of the De deccan plateau which includes uh, parts of uh, madhya pradesh maharashtra andhra pradesh parts of tamil nadu and gujarat and in the upper reaches of the godavari and the krishna uh, region krishna river region the northwestern part of deccan plateau over here and the black soil is very deep over here in this region then the soils as i said earlier it is known as the rigur soil or the black cotton soil so this is how cotton is grown and the black soils they are generally clay deep and impermeable they swell up and become sticky when wet and shrink when dried so they'll form these uh, cracks in the dry season as you can see in the picture so this will be a kind of self plowing because we don't have to again plow the land automatically we can just put the seeds in these cracks and then when again precipitation or rainfall occurs again the crops will start growing so because of this character of slow absorption and loss of moisture both will be slow the absorption also will be slow and the loss of moisture will be less so the black soil it will retain the moisture for a very long time so this will help crops even in the dry seasons especially the crops which need more rain it will help those crops to sustain sustain so chemically the black soils they are very rich in lime iron magnesia and alumina also they contain potash but they lack in phosphorus nitrogen and organic matter the color of the soil it ranges from deep black to gray so then we have red and yellow soil so this is mainly developed because of the crystalline igneous rocks in the areas of lower rainfall in the eastern and southern part of deccan plateau and they are found along the piedmont zone of the western ghat piedmont zone is nothing but the foothills or the base base of the mountain the base areas so the long stretches of area it is occupied by red loamy soil so as you can see on the picture this this orangish color over here it represents our red and yellow soil also these red and yellow soils they are found in parts of odisha chatisgarh and in the southern parts of the middle ganga plain this soil it develops this reddish color mainly due to the presence of iron which is in crystalline and metamorphic rocks and it will look yellow when it is hydrated and a lot of moisture when it is present it will look yellow so the fine grain red and yellow soils they are normally fertile but the coarse grain soils they will mainly be found in the dry upland areas and they will be poor in fertility because in the upland areas the rain will be very less so they are generally lacking in nitrogen phosphorus and humus then we have our laterite soil so the laterite soil it is derived from a latin word which means later or later which means brick so these laterite soils they develop in areas where the temperature is very high and rainfall is also very high and they are the result of intense leaching which occurs due to tropical rains so because of this leaching uh, lime and silica they'll get leached away 
and the soils will become rich in iron oxide and aluminium compound which will be left behind after the rain so humus content of the soil is removed by bacteria because it thrives very well in high temperature and these soils they are poor in organic matter like and even nitrogen phosphate and calcium but they have excess of potassium and iron oxide that is why you can see the color is a bit reddish because of the presence of iron oxide then laterite soil they are not suitable for cultivation but what happens is in certain regions applications of certain types of manure and fertilizers it will uh, help in making the soil uh, cultiv it will it will make the soil more uh used for cultivation it will make it suitable for cultivation sorry so as you can see on the map over here this light pink color these few small spots so red laterite laterite soil it is found in tamil nadu andhra pradesh and kerala which is more suitable for the crops like cashew nut whereas uh, these soil soils they are mainly used for uh, house construction because they are widely cut as bricks bricks are made out of these soils so these soils they have uh, mainly developed in the higher areas of the peninsula plateau and the laterite soils they are commonly found in madhya pradesh hilly areas of odisha assam karnataka kerala and tamil nadu then we have a arid soils so arid soils they are mainly found in western rajasthan and uh, drier regions so they range from red to brown in color and they have this type of uh, kankars and as you can see in the map this yellow region it is the arid soil region mainly in western rajasthan so they are generally sandy in structure and saline in nature they look like sand but they'll have saline properties like very salty content present in it and in some areas the salt content will be so high that we can extract common salt by evaporating the saline water so due to the dry climate and high temperature and the accelerated evaporation they lack moisture and humus content and nitrogen is insufficient and the phosphate content is normal and the lower horizons of the soil they are occupied by kankar layers as i said earlier and because of the increasing calcium content downwards in the lower regions so the kankar layer formation in the bottom horizon it will restrict the infiltration of water and when irrigation is made available the soil moisture is readily available for sustainable plant growth so as i said they are mainly developed in western rajasthan which exhibit the characteristics of arid topography and these soils they'll be poor in uh, humus and organic matter next we have the saline soils which are very uh, famous in the mangrove forest regions so they are also known as the usura soils and they contain a larger portion of sodium which is our salt and then potassium and magnesium so they become infertile and they do not support any vegetative growth they have more salts and largely because of the dry climate and poor drainage so they occur in arid and semi arid regions and where water is clogged stag snag stagnant water bodies and swampy areas so their structure ranges from sandy to loamy and they lack in nitrogen and calcium also they are more widespread in western gujarat deltas of eastern coast and the sundarban areas in west bengal so in the run of kutch the southwest monsoon it will bring salt particles and deposit in the crust and also the sea water intrusions they will uh, promote more occurrence of saline soils when more number of sea water will be pumped in the underground that is when this happens and in the areas of intensive cultivation and excessive use of irrigation and especially the areas where green revolution occurred the fertile alluvial soil will become 
saline. So excessive irrigation with the dry climatic condition, it will promote this capillary action. This will re result in a lot of deposition of soil on the top layer of the soil. And in areas like Punjab, Haryana, the farmers, they will be advised to add gypsum to the soil to solve the problem of salinity. Then we have PT soils. So these PT soils, they will be very high in organic matter and moisture content because they are found in areas of heavy rainfall and high humidity where the growth of vegetation is very good. So the large quantity of dead organic matter, it will accumulate in these areas and give a rich humus and organic content to the soil. So you can see over here the soil, it is very soft and it will be very moisty. That is why it will be little uh, moisty because of the water content. It will have high water content in it. So it will be in a sort of a semi-liquid form. So the organic matter in these soils, it can go up to 40 to 50 percent. And these soils are normally heavy and black in color. And at many places, they will be alkaline in nature also. So as you can see, it is found in parts of uh, northern part of Bihar, southern part of Uttarakhand, then the coastal areas of West Bengal and Tamil Nadu and Odisha. Next we have the forest soils which are mainly found in the forest areas where rainfall is sufficiently available and uh, these soils they vary in structure and texture depending upon the mountain environment which is around them. So they are loamy and silty on the valley sides and they will be cross grained in the upper slopes because the rainfall will not be much in the upper slopes. So if you can see this is the region where our forest soil is found and little bit over here. So in snow bound areas of the Himalayas they experience denudation and are acidic with low humus content. They are also found in the lower valleys which make them fertile. The soil which is found in the lower valleys, it will be fertile. And it is evident that the soils, their texture, quality, nature, they are very vital for the germination and growth of plants and vegetations, including the crops. So this statement is concluding our uh, soil part, the different types of soil. And then soils, they are like living systems, like any other organ or organism they too develop a decay they too develop and then decay they get degraded and they even respond to proper treatment if administered at time so even when we have uh, plants at home pots when we water the soil the plant will be fresh and it will keep growing but if we leave that uh, pot or that plant for many months it will start developing cracks the soil will completely lose its moisture and become very dry and the plant will also die. So that is how soil works. Also, they have very serious repercussions on other components of the system, which they themselves are important parts of. So soil is, uh, soil is one major uh, aspect where life starts and ends in soil only. For example, a plant will start growing in the soil and then it will be uh, eaten by an animal. Then again that animal will die and get decayed and decomposed in the same soil. So life begins and ends at soils. So it is very important that we check soil degradation and try to conserve soil because these various feathering agents, they they are so powerful and they have so much force that they keep uh, displacing or weathering the la topmost layers of soil every now and then. So soil degradation in broad sense it can be defined as a decline of soil fertility and when the nutritional value will decline and the depth of soil it will keep going down due to erosion and misuse. So every year, almost 1.87 billion hectares of land is degraded. The soil is degraded and this area is more than that, more than the area of Nagaland. 
so almost 30% uh, of india it faces uh, the threat of land degradation and soil degradation is the main factor which is leading to the depleting of soil resource base in india the degree of degradation it varies from place to place according to the topography and the wind velocity and also the amount of rainfall so in certain areas where the slopes are very steep there you can see landslides occurring or the soil getting washed away downwards then because of the wind velocity also in deserts and other such dry areas when wind will blow with a high speed it will carry the top layer of the soil with it it will blow away the entire top layer and it will displace it or uh, it will keep uh, reducing the layers of soil also sometimes when there is heavy rainfall it will literally make gullies or pits in the soil because of the force of the water droplets even running water has a lot of source so that can also form these uh, gullies and uh, cracks in soil so soil erosion is the destruction of soil cover and the soil forming processes and the erosional processes of running water and wind they go on simultaneously but generally we know how nature is it will always create a balance so there will be balance between these two processes and uh, the rate of removal of fine particles from the surface is the same as the rate of addition of particles to the soil layer so what will happen even if wind is carrying the soil particles from one region it will again drop them a little farther away in another region also when water is flowing uh, very fast it will carry all the sediments and deposit them in another area so that is how nature will balance it but sometimes what happens is not only natural activities even human factors can lead to a greater amount of removal of soil and many human activities are responsible for soil erosion to a great extent so as human population increases the demand on land will also increase because land will be cleared for human settlements and other developmental projects and uh, forest and other natural vegetation it is removed for human settlement cultivation for grazing animals and for various other needs so as you can see over here how you can see the force of water and how water has literally made the soil weak and made it slide downwards and this is how wind you can see the soil particles which are getting blown away wind and water are powerful agents of soil erosion because of their ability to remove soil and to transport it so wind erosion is it is significant in arid and semi arid regions because their vegetation will be very poor so enough uh, trees or plants will not be there to hold the soil in place so roots what they'll do is they literally hold the soil in place tightly together imagine that our fingers are roots so when we carry sand in hand and when we hold it tightly that is how trees also do their roots will get uh, nicely curled up into the soil and they'll hold the soil in place but in regions with heavy rainfall and steep slopes erosion by running water is more significant and water erosion which is more serious and occurs extensively in different parts of india it takes place mainly in the form of sheet and gully erosion as i said earlier and the sheet erosion it will take place on level lands straight lands after a heavy shower and the soil removal it is not we can't notice it it will happen slowly slowly but after some point of time we will see that a huge amount of soil has been displaced or removed the top layer so all this is very harmful since it it will remove the finer and the most fertile layer of the soil and gully erosion it is very common on steep slopes as you can see this picture over here this is gully erosion so this is how it will make a crack in between the land a soft crack we won't call this a crack a, a real crack but a soft type of a crack where you can see literally a pit type a small pit 
so gullies they deepen with rainfall they cut the agricultural land into small fragments and make them unfit for cultivation so a region with large number of deep gullies or ravines it is called bad land topography the chambal ravines which we learnt about earlier so ravines they are widespread and mainly found in the chambal basin and they are also found in tamil nadu and west bengal region so the country is losing about 8000 hectares of land to ravines every year so soil erosion it is a serious problem for indian agriculture and it has ne- negative effects in other spheres also not even in agriculture the vegetation the wildlife and other such things also which are heavily dependent on soil we see they are adversely affecting these other spheres so the eroded material which is carried down to the rivers and they lower down their so this will lower down their carrying capacity and cause frequent floods and damage to agricultural lands and deforestation is one of the major causes of soil erosion as i explained earlier how trees hold the roots uh, how trees will hold the soil because of their roots but when we cut the trees the roots will become weak and they die so then it will loosen up the soil and then it will easily get washed away or blown away so plants they keep soils bound in locks of roots and thus prevent erosion so not only trees even small plants can have a huge impact on preventing soil erosion so they also had humus to the soil by shedding their leaves and twigs the trees and forests they have been denuded practically in most parts of india but their effect on soil erosion is more in the hilly parts of the country because there hilly parts won't have that much vegetation cover because of the uh, low precipitation so a fa- fairly large area of arable land in the irrigated irrigated zones of india it is becoming saline because of over irrigation and the salt which is uh, found in the lower prof- profiles of the soil it comes up to the surface and destroys the fertility of the soil then the chemical fertilizers when they are used in the absence of organic manure they can also be very harmful to the soil because slowly slowly its chemical fertilizers are basically like sm- slow poison like in short term they'll give you very good results but in longer term what will happen it literally kill the life in soil uh, soil also has uh, its own type of life which gives life to other forms the various properties which are present in it so chemical fertilizers are very harmful and unless the soil gets enough humus chemicals harden it and reduce its fertility in the long run so to make it simple imagine a human being taking medicines continuously and in in the short term it will heal us quickly and you know we'll become fine but in the long run if we keep taking medicines continuously it will affect our body in many ways so same way chemicals are like temporary medicines to soil but if we keep uh, regularly adding chemical fertilizers to the soil then its natural ability will completely be dead so this problem is very common in uh, areas where river valley projects will happen and also the areas which were the first beneficiaries of the green revolution so when we added the high yielding variety seeds in uh, areas of green revolution that was a huge disaster and there were many side effects so according to the estimates about half of the total land of india is under some degree of degradation every now and then so it's a continuous process every year india loses millions of tons of t- soil and its nutrients to the agents of weathering and its degradation takes place which will adversely affect our nas- national productivity so it is em- imperative to initiate immediate steps to conserve soil so in the next slide we'll be reading about how we can conserve soil and uh, why it affects our nas- national productivity is a huge amount of the indian population is dependent on agriculture for livelihood so 
when we see from that point of view also soil is very very important and then when we see from the point of biodiversity also the forest the animals the wildlife they are heavily dependent on the soil because uh, if soil is there then only forest will exist if forest and ecosystem is there then only the wildlife will exist so everything is interconnected so soil conservation so soil conservation can happen by humans how humans destroy or are reasons for uh, uh, soil getting damaged in various ways like that we can even fix these problems if we follow certain type proper measures so we already know that nature has its own laws of maintaining balance and it offers many opportunities to humans to develop the economy without disturbing the ecological balance without interrupting that ecological balance so soil conservation it is a method to maintain soil fertility and to prevent soil erosion and exhaustion of soil so it will also help us in improving the degraded condition of soil and it is uh, essentially aggravated mainly because of faulty practices what happens is these natural uh, agents of weathering they uh, the damage which they cause to the soil it is very slow and it is very natural but the damage which is caused by the human activities it will speed up that a uh, damage or degradation of soil mainly because of the faulty practices by humans so the first step in any rational sol solution is to check open lands which are present on slopes for farming so these lands which have a slope gradient of more than 25% it should not be used for cultivation so if it if it has a very steep slope like a slide then it is very wrong to do agriculture on any such areas and if at all the land is being used for agriculture the terraces it should be planned carefully so that there will not be too much runoff of the soil so overgrazing and shifting agriculture in many parts of india it has affected the natural cover of land and it has given uh, rise to extensive erosion erosion so what happens is when these cattle or these animals they feed on the grass the when the grass layer is uh, removed and eaten up by these animals that soil in that part will become weak because even grass have roots so these roots again they hold the soil in place so once the animals eat the grass the soil will become weak in that region then again because of wind or water or rainfall the soil will uh, get removed and in shifting cultivation what happens is when they burn or clear vegetation when that when they do that burning that burning also can cause a lot of damage to the soil and it can um, kill all the microorganisms and then which the beneficial bacteria which is present in the soil so it should be regulated and controlled by educating villagers and making them aware that these practices they have a lot of consequences so the remedies for this is contour bunding as you can see over here and then we have this contour terracing and then regulated forestry control grazing cover cropping so this is cover cropping so what happens is cover cropping is so what happens in cover cropping is uh, they'll grow lands of either sides sorry they'll grow crops on either sides of the main crop which is being grown but this crops which are present on the either sides they are not used for any commercial use they are mainly grown on the sides to give shelter to this main crop which is being grown in the middle and these crops which will be on the sides they'll grow at a faster pace so once they grow at a faster pace the height of these uh, crops will provide a shelter to these crops so that is called cover cropping then other ways are mixed farming crop rotation so these are some of the remedial measures which can be adopted to reduce soil erosion also 
the effort should be made to prevent gully erosion and control their formation so these finger gullies can be eliminated by terracing and also through the construction of check dams so these check dams can be made for bigger gullies and the erosive velocity of water can be reduced because of these check dams and also special attention should be given uh, to control the headward extension of gullies this headward extension means this gully will have a broader region which will be called its head so that has more chances of spreading and becoming more deep so that should be checked first and covered first and this is a gully plug so this can be done by gully these are the remedies gully plugging terracing or by planting cover vegetation as we read about in the earlier slide so this is a gully plug so in arid and semi arid areas effort should be made to protect cultivable lands and to protect the lands from the encroachment of sand dunes so this can be done through developing shelter belts of trees and agroforestry around that region and lands which are not suitable for cultivation can be converted into pastures for grazing so that way overgrazing can be controlled also experiments have been done to stabilize the sand dunes in western rajasthan by the central arid zone research institute and the central soil conservation board which was set up by the government of india it has prepared a number of plans for the soil conservation in different parts of the country but these plans they are based on climatic conditions and the configuration of land and also the social behavior of people so these plans are fragmental in nature and integrated land use planning is therefore the best uh, technique which can be used for proper soil conservation also the land should be classified according to their capability how much uh, crops they can grow how much fertilizer they can bear and the pressure which can be exerted on the soil and also land use maps should be prepared and land should be put to right uses also the final responsibility for achieving the conservation of land and soil it will mainly rest upon the people who operated and who get the benefits out of it out of it so the individuals also they have to put in efforts to conserve in one way or the other we need to contribute from our sides as well so we read about the different soils which are found in india then we read about uh, soil conservation how we read about wildlife and forest conservation in the previous uh, video so all these three are closely related with each other so make sure that uh, you connect all these three forest wildlife and soil conservation and uh, how their uh, how their degradation or their decline can ad adversely affect each other so i'll be back with the final chapter which is a uh, chapter 7 until then all the best and thank you